Hi, and welcome to Pharmacology of the Synapse. In today's video, we will explore the tripartite synapse. To understand the tripartite synapse, we need to review glial cells in the brain. Glial cells include microglia, oligodendrocytes, and astrocytes. Microglia are the brain's resident immune cells, which engulf viruses, bacteria, and other debris. Microglia can also release chemicals that can contribute to neural damage, such as oxidative stress molecules and cytokines. Oligodendrocytes myelinate neuronal axons and facilitate neural transmission. These cells were introduced at the very beginning of the course. The last category are astrocytes. These cells form contacts with neurons and will be the focus of this video. The tripartite synapse refers to the presynaptic terminal, the postsynaptic terminal, and an astrocyte contact that encompasses both pre- and postsynaptic terminals. Astrocytes have numerous branches, as seen on the left panel, and each astrocyte can make contact with over 100,000 synapses. At the synapse itself, you can see that from this electron micrograph that the astrocyte makes contact with both the pre- and the postsynaptic terminal, and together this is referred to as the tripartite synapse. Astrocytes also make contact with other astrocytes in a network called the syncytium that essentially encompasses all neurons. And lastly, astrocytes and neurons communicate, and communication from astrocytes to neurons is broadly termed gliotransmission. So astrocytes were long thought of as inert cells of the brain that didn't have much function other than holding cells together. They were then discovered to help neurons maintain energy homeostasis and assisted in regulating blood flow in the brain. Much more recently, it has been discovered that astrocytes play a much more active role in the brain, including regulating synaptic neurotransmission by sensing neurotransmitters and releasing neuroactive chemicals and having their own signaling mechanism. We will go over these last three points in this video. Astrocytes regulate synaptic transmission by taking up neurotransmitters and help stopping neurotransmission. This occurs at both excitatory and inhibitory synapses. This slide covers excitatory synapses. So at excitatory synapses where glutamate is released, astrocytes take up glutamate using two transporters, GLT-1 and GLAST. Astrocytes are actually responsible for the majority of glutamate clearance in the synapse using these mechanisms. After uptake of glutamate, the astrocytes metabolize glutamate into glutamine and release this building block back to the neuron. Lastly, in addition to glutamine release, astrocytes also release D-serine which is a co-activator required for NMDA receptor activation. At inhibitory synapses, astrocytes perform a similar function. They take up GABA using two transporters, GAT1 and GAT3. GAT3 is much more expressed than GAT1, and in addition to its um, synaptic location, GAT3 is also expressed extrasynaptically or outside of the synapse. And this serves to mop up extra GABA spillover that might escape the synapse, thus helping to stop GABA neurotransmission. Similar to excitatory synapses, astrocytes break down GABA into glutamine and release this building block back to the neuron. So in addition to glutamine, astrocytes can also release neurotransmitters such as GABA and glutamate and neuroactive molecules such as ATP, prostaglandins, and neuropeptides. Astrocytes use two main methods of release, transporters and exocytosis. You don't need to know the details, but I'd like you to remember that astrocyte exocytosis mechanisms and machinery are similar but not exactly the same as neuronal vesicle release, as illustrated by this figure.
So we know that astrocytes have transporters to regulate synaptic conditions and can release neuroactive molecules. So let's examine signaling in astrocytes. Astrocytes express many receptors, both ionotropic ion channels and metabotropic G-protein coupled receptors, as well as transporters, such as ENT, which is an ATP adenosine transporter, potassium channels, mGlor5, GABA A and B receptors, serotonin 2, and D1 receptors. However, unlike neurons, a signal in, a, in an astrocyte does not result in membrane potential changes. So astrocytes don't conduct electrical signals and don't have action potentials. Instead, astrocyte activation results in increases and decreases in intracellular calcium levels called calcium oscillations. These calcium oscillations can occur in one astrocyte and can also propagate to other astrocytes. So this figure shows the up and down calcium oscillations in vivo in mouse brain as detected by calcium fluorescence dyes. These calcium oscillations in astrocytes can then lead to gliotransmission. So in summary, the tripartite synapse is a more complete view of the synapse. We now know that astrocytes can sense, signal, and release neuroactive molecules. So what does this mean? And what are the implications of astrocyte function? Research is ongoing as this is a relatively new research area. So in addition to finding out new information about how astrocytes contribute to normal brain function, astrocytes have been implicated uh, in many diseases uh, and pathological functions such as neuroinflammation, neurodegeneration and degenerative diseases such as Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease, stroke and hemodynamic dysfunction, epilepsy, and many psychiatric disorders such as depression, drug addiction, schizophrenia, and OCD. So in summary, astrocytes may be very important in some of these mechanisms.